Today, I want to talk about Michael Jones and his decision to join up with the two-lane green wave. And all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. So it's college football related, sports related. We have a good time. The news is... Michael Jones has transferred to Tulane, where he will continue his playing career after recording just 500, less than 500 yards, receiving at Oklahoma 495 on 33 catches, just two catches last season. He decided to go into the portal. He's come out with the green wave. He's going to play for Willie Fritz, who needs help at wide receiver. Jalen McCleskey and Darnell Mooney are gone, right? So are their nearly 1,300 yards in receiving. And it ain't like Tulane is some sort of juggernaut, right? And that's how this usually works out. When a dude leaves a blue blood program, he doesn't traditionally join another blue blood program going through the transfer portal. And this means that Michael Jones is headed back home. He's from Patterson, Louisiana. And at the time that he committed and signed to Oklahoma, he was the number 231 player in the country. I wish Michael Jones well. I hope you do too. I thought he was an outstanding player. I thought coming out of that class, he could be out really the best to do it out of that group, but I was proven wrong. And I think this is more to the point of, yo, what do you expect to happen? Like, did you expect a kid that did not play a lot to go into the portal to come out somewhere where he doesn't think he's going to play a lot? You know, like Ty DeArmond going to SMU in part so he could play, right? The caliber of player at Tulane or at Southern Methodist is not the caliber of player that is at Oklahoma, if you, well, just look at the win-loss record, the trophies won, and then, if you so inclined, look at the recruiting rankings. But I thought this was more indicative of just what Oklahoma is able to bring in year in and year out to not miss a player like Michael Jones, in that they brought in Theo Howard, who grad transferred from UCLA, among other things. And Jaqueline Crawford just went into the portal, seems like he's come out of the portal, couldn't end up playing at Oklahoma. I mean, guys go into the portal all the time. Whether or not they want to come out or the coaches want to recruit them back remains to be seen. But I wanted to talk about this news because it's always nice to hear the kids coming out at a place where I think, like they think, they're going to be able to play. Like Troy James came out at Prairie View A&M. I know that most of you don't really care or follow Prairie View A&M football, but I want him to go to a place where he's going to have a good time and he's going to be able to play significant snaps because that's the goal here. Playing college football at the Division I level is a privilege. Playing it at a Power 5 level is all but unheard of, except we know about all of them. I'll add to this, the Oklahoma 2020 class is going to have between 22 and 25 kiddos, right? How many get admitted to Oklahoma every year, to the University of Oklahoma? How many get an opportunity to play a sport? Now whittle that down. You'll see 25 dudes, men, get an opportunity to earn a chance to play for the University of Oklahoma. Not that they will, right? I mean, I'm going to do this upload not to, I mean, in the near future, about what the 2020 class looks like when it comes to the top 247 recruiting rankings in Oklahoma. And in there is a guy like Shane Witter, who's barely a top 200 recruit according to 247 sports but he's also got 446 speed like legitimate laser and that's a dude that's not a five star you know he's a not even considered a top 100 talent and then I have to remind people millions of kids over a million kids played high school football in 2019 I have to remind them that only 11,000 and change get to play division one football in any given year and only a handful of those, we're talking about maybe 500 kids actually play more than 10 snaps at a Power 5 program in any given year. Michael Jones' story is actually a success as far as I'm concerned. He gets to leave Oklahoma after having played there and go play Division One football in the American at a place where they have had a winning record the last couple of years and have an opportunity to play in a bowl game. I don't know that that's the way he draws it up because none of us draw it up that way, right? We all draw it up to where we're the person that is being pursued and we're the person that is going to put together this Heisman Trophy winning season and we're the person that's going to play in the NFL. The sobering fact is it ain't true. The sobering fact is the best we can hope for 
is an opportunity. You get a chance, right? You get a chance to go do this. I think the more that you pay attention to this stuff, the more that you think about some of what these boys have to go through and what they did just to get an opportunity, the more you'll come to root for them. You'll find yourself rooting for Levi Draper, for Ryan Jones, for Mark Jackson. You'll find yourself really, really wanting them to succeed. You'll look up and see Jordan Parker played and played well, and you'll feel good about it. And that goes for all of the kids that have to enter the portal for one reason or another, whether they do so against their coach's wishes, which is most of them, or whether their coach is like, nah, this is, this is a good time for you to go. I mean, I, I had a satirical upload about Chase Bryce entering the transfer portal, and he came to Dabo Sweeney at the end of the season. Sweeney was like, yeah, I think that's a good decision. I'm going to help you. I think it matters, right? I think it matters that he knew what he signed up for and that Trevor turned out to be better than anybody else playing football at the time. I mean, it took Joe Burrow to beat Trevor Lawrence. Joe Burrow had one of the best seasons we've ever seen in the sport. Michael Jones was one of a group of wide receivers that included Theo Weiss, Jaden Hazelwood, C.D. Lamb, Charleston Rambo. I mean, even Drake Stoops was able to get on the field a little bit more often than Michael Jones was. To say nothing of what Jaqueline Crawford must have been thinking about when he saw all these guys come through that he just could not beat out for a spot. I'm just saying roof for him. That's all I'm saying. All right. That's it for me. Doses.